Okay, hello. Uh, I'm gonna be going over how to very basically install QMK and flash a board. So step one is gonna be to install MSYS2. Um, pretty much skipped that step in the video, but it's pretty simple. Go to their website, find the latest version, download it, click install. Install it wherever you want. <clears throat> now, after you open MSYS2 the first time, by default, it's gonna open this program called MSYS. Uh, you need to close that. Also, it, they look basically the same. So MSYS looks like that, but you actually need to open MinGW 64-bit. So you can open your start menu, type in MinGW 64-bit and open that. Um, so the first thing we wanna do is make sure everything is up to date. So we're gonna type in Pacman dash capital S YU, and that is going to kind of update all the packages um, in our MSYS2 install. And you can just hit enter to proceed with the installation. And then um, it'll close the terminal and you'll have to reopen it. So you can go MingW64. Now, the next thing we wanna do is get the QMK code repository. So we're not gonna be using the Python method to set it up. Um, instead, we're going to Google GitHub QMK. We're basically going to copy QMK over for ourselves. Um, you want to go to the GitHub QMK, which you can see the URL up here. You want to clone with HTTPS. You want to make sure it doesn't say SSH. You want HTTPS. And then you're going to come over here. Now, the next thing we need to do is make sure Git is installed on our MSYS2. So Pacman is what's called a package manager. Um, Pacman package manager, and it lets us install programs. So dash s is how we tell it we want to install something, um, and git is the program we want. And then we'll hit enter to proceed with the installation. So if you're not familiar, git is what's called version control software, and basically um, what git allows us to do is find the is share code with other people. So the people who make QMK have this repository online with all of QMK's code. And basically we're gonna download this to our own computer using the program Git. And then it's also gonna help us install some dependencies in a bit that the program needs to run. So we can see Git is done. We'll do Git clone. And then here we want to paste that um, link we got earlier and hit enter and it's gonna spit out some text and it'll take a while and you'll know it's done uh, when you see this line pop up again below so I'll come back as soon as it's done all right so git has finished cloning the file if we type in the command ls um, which is list files, we'll see we now have this QMK firmware folder. And if we want to access it, we need to CD, which is change directory. And if you type in a little bit of it and press tab, it'll finish it for you. And then you can hit enter. And you can see here, we're now in the QMK firmware folder. The next thing we need to do is let QMK install all of the drivers and other setup things we need. So if we type ls, we'll see QMK is made up of a bunch of files. Uh, we really care about the ones in the util folder. So we'll check out the util folder with lsutil, and you'll see there's this msys2 install.sh. Uh, so what we need to do is tell the computer that that can be run and then run it. So step one is gonna be chmod, which lets us change the file permissions of a file. Uh, we'll type in u for user or ourselves, plus x, which is we're granting ourselves the execute um, privilege on util slash msys2. And like I said before, if you press tab, it'll finish it for you um, and hit enter. So now we are able to execute that file. And to do that, we just type in dot slash util slash msys2 install.sh and hit enter. And I will come back to you when this is done. It's installing QMK right now, and this will take anywhere from a few minutes to 10 or 15, depending on how fast your system is, what your download speed is, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so we've come to a point where the installer is asking for input. 
And at this point, you're going to press A for I would like all supported drivers to be installed. Hit enter. It's going to pop up a little Windows warning. Click yes. It's going to pop up a new window and install some drivers. We'll give it a second to do so. Okay, and then it's going to finish up the QMK install, which should not take a super long time, and I'll be done. I'll be back when that's done. All right, we're back. Uh, it says installation completed. Close this window. Restart msys2 in GW. So we'll exit. You can also just close it like normal. Um, we will open up a new MinGW window. I will zoom in so you guys can see what's going on. Uh, if we type ls, you'll notice that we're no longer in the QMK firmware folder and also that the installer added this new QMK utils folder. We're pretty much just going to ignore that and we'll go right into QMK firmware. Uh, if we look around, the main difference is we now have this bin folder. And if we look inside of that with LS bin, it contains this one thing called QMK. And that's what we're going to be using to flash all of our keyboards 100%. So the whenever we want to flash something, we need to make sure we're in the QMK fold, firmware folder so that this um, uh, you can look here to verify that you're in the QMK firmware folder or you can type in PAWD for present working directory and should you should be in the QMK firmware folder. Um, and then when you wanna flash something, you type bin QMK. And I'm gonna start with compiling something um, to just make sure that everything works. And it's likely that there's gonna be a small error here, but it's very easy to fix. I've had it happen on some systems, it doesn't happen on others. Um, anyway, when we compile, we need to tell it which keyboard we're going to compile to. And how you know what to type there is go to where you installed msys2. So for me, that was Y programs msys2. For you, by default, it might be C msys2. Uh, just what, when you installed msys2, whatever you typed in there. Then we're going to go to home, your username, QMK firmware, keyboards. And then here, you're going to find the keyboard that you want to um, compile. So if, I'll just choose a random one to test with. Um, we'll compile the Chili keyboard. So anything after keyboards, you'll need to type in here. So our keyboard is Chili. Then we also need to tell it what key map we want to use. So if we look in the key maps folder, these are our options. Um, VIA is for a different program, so you can pretty much just ignore that. So it looks like the Chili keyboard only has a default key map. So we'll put default and we'll hit enter and we'll wait a second. It's pretty normal for it to hang like this for a second. Okay, perfect. So we did run into that error that I said was likely and that's fine. It tells you how to fix it right here. Um, so all you have to do is type in the code it tells you to use, which is make git submodule, hit enter, and then when that completes, I'll be back. Okay, so that took maybe a minute or two on my system. Might take a little bit longer or shorter for you, who knows. Um, anyway, you can use the up arrow to go through your old commands, the up and down arrow. So I'm going to use the up arrow twice to get back to our compile command and hit enter to try running it again. And unless the universe is breaking down around me, this should work. You'll see a bunch of OKs. The first time you compile a keyboard is going to be the slowest. Um, any future times you do it, it's going to only compile the files that have changed, basically. Uh, so it'll end up going a lot faster, and it'll also spam a lot less OKs to your console. So I'm going to grab the keyboard that I intend to flash, uh, which is a Gherkin. I have not yet received my Uno in the mail, so I'm going to be using a Gherkin as the example. Um, now, when you want to flash your keyboard, it's going to be very similar, except instead of uh, compile, you're going to type flash. Now, for the Gherkin, um, unlike the Chili, which you click on it and then there's a bunch of files right there, the Gherkin is inside of a folder called 40% Club 
and then gherkin. Um, so when I do my keyboard, I have to do 40% club forward slash gherkin. Make sure you use forward slashes because this software, um, msys, does not like backslashes. Neither does Linux as a whole. And I'll just use the default key map. And um, give me one. OK, I've made it so that you can see my gherkin on the screen um, so that you can see what I'm doing with it. So I'm going to hit Enter. And the first thing that this command is going to do is compile compile the firmware for the Gherkin down into a hex file. And then the second thing it's going to do is enter flashing mode. So I have this tool that I'm going to use to put my Gherkin in bootloader mode. It's just a wire with the two ends exposed here. See it a little better, maybe. And I happen to know that on the pro micro in my Gherkin, it's going to be on this side, the two pins closest to the right or thereabouts. So if I sneak my wire in there, and hopefully I'm able to. Hopefully I'm able to touch those two pins together. There we go. Uh, as soon as you touch the two pins together or put your keyboard in bootloader mode, it'll start spamming out a bunch of extra stuff and then it's done. And now you can see my Gherkin has a key map on it. I don't know where the delete key is on this keyboard. There you go. Gherkin, super cool. Wow, this keyboard's really weird. All right, anyway, um, so if you want to flash your Uno, what you'll do is download the Uno folder that SnipEye uh, posted in the Discord. You will, or really this is true for any custom keyboard. Um, I kind of made this video for the Uno community, but yeah, any custom keyboard, you'll grab the file that someone provided, you'll copy and paste it into your keyboards folder. And now it's just like any other keyboard. So you can just flash and type Uno. And then uh, you'll have to keep in mind that you'll want to check on um, what kind of key maps you have available. So the Uno just has a default one. And if you want to edit your keyboard in any way, um, you'll click on the keymap.c file, which is here, and you'll edit it to do whatever you want. So this keyboard only has one button, and by default, it's a custom macro. But if I wanted to make it the A key, I could just type in KCA. The B key is KCB. And I think editing this file is a little bit outside the scope of this video, but um, you can look up example keymap.cs from other keyboards if you're curious how they do things or if you want to do something custom with yours. All right, good luck with your keyboards. Have a fantastic day and goodbye.